Hey guys, welcome to Gen Z Codes. This is the first tutorial to Java. I've done some tutorials for Python and Scratch, and you, if you haven't seen them yet, I would recommend you to go and watch those first because they kind of build a foundation for Java. Also, I will be using the software, which is called NetBeans, and I would suggest you to do the same, but if you do want, you can definitely go ahead and choose another software if you're more comfortable with it. In case you need some assistance with downloading uh, NetBeans though, um, I've put a link to a presentation in the description where I've written down the steps for the download. Now in the presentation, there are also some keywords, terminology of Java that I have added and I've put the definitions for everything so that you can kind of follow what I'm going to be saying in this video. If I would definitely go ahead, uh, I would definitely go ahead and check those out first because the terminology is kind of key to understanding what I will be saying in this video because otherwise everything might just seem foreign and it might just go over your head, right? Um, anyway, so let's get started with Java now. Let's get started with NetBeans. All right, so the very first thing you want to do if you're new to NetBeans, if you're not, then you can probably just skip about like maybe a minute of the video. But if you are new to NetBeans, then the very first thing you want to do is you want to go to File and you want to go to Project Group. Now let me, and then you want to click on new group, right? Now let me explain to you exactly what we're doing over here. So, on in Java, we kind of call programs projects. Now each project has a certain number of files that it stores. Each of these files are used to build that whole program sort of thing, right? Now, that project that we have, that project, is stored in something further called a project group. A project group, you can kind of Think of it as a folder where you're storing all of your projects, right? So I already have created a project group. I've named it Gen Z Codes, and I've selected Free Group. But if you're new again, what you can do is you can click Free Group, or if you have a folder where you want to store it, you can kind of store it over there as well, or um, you can just go ahead and, and store it on Free Group like that, and you can just give whatever name you want, and then click on Create Group. All right. Now the next thing you want to do is once you've created your project group, you want to click on new project. This is how to create a new project now. And you're just going to click on next and you're going to uh, change the project name over here. Um, the first project that we that I have already gone and created and I will be explaining to you what it is. But you can copy down the code from uh, the project that I will be showing you right now. Um, and you can just copy it onto a new project of your own, which you will call maybe Hello World or Introduction or Gen Z Codes. Go ahead, call it whatever you want. Be creative. It's completely all right. And then you can click on Finish. And then over here, you will come to this type of screen. Now, the only thing that's different, you will probably not see this line because I have added this line to this is the only code that I have actually added to this thing right now. Right now. Let me start and explain to you what this code is. All right, so basically, the first lines that you see over here, these gray parts, all right, these are called comments. Now, a comment is does not is not actually coding. It is just kind of like making a note of what each line does in case you want to, or maybe just adding a note somewhere saying that, you know, this line does this, or um, make this line do this. It's it's just basically a note, right? It's a note for you to take, and you can do it however you want. You can even add it, don't add it. It's completely optional, right? There are already some uh, comments that will be available. You can even go ahead and delete them. They're honestly not necessary, but it's completely optional. If you do feel the need to add some comments um, because you feel the need to kind of explain to yourself what each line does, and you want to make a note of it, you can definitely go ahead and add some comments. Also, if you've seen my Python videos, you will probably know that the comments in Python are very different from those in Java. Over here, we can see that in order to write a comment on uh, Java, we use a slash and asterisk, and then we type whatever we want, right? On the other hand, in Python, we have the hashtag sign. And remember, syntaxing in uh, syntaxing in Java is very different from syntaxing in Python. So even if you've seen those videos, and even if some of the uh, commands might be very similar, 
uh, the syntaxing is going to be very, very different. So make sure you keep up with the syntax and you don't kind of confuse them because that would um, result in an error and it, your program might not run, right? All right, so now that we've got the comments part covered, let's move on to the first line of code that we have over here. Now this is package hello world. So this is the package name that has been assigned by NetBeans to the folder holding the class files. It is typical to use all lowercase letters for a package name. Again, if you um, want to know more about these packages, classes, main methods, and all of these sorts of things, uh, go ahead and click on the link in the description where I've put the presentation. Presentation has all the vocabulary, all the terminology, and you'll be able to understand this better. All right. Now the next line that we have is public class hello world. So this line is the definition of our class named hello world. The keyword public determines if other parts of the program can access this class. Now keywords are part of every programming language. These are reserved words and cannot be used in any regular Java expression. Now the left curly brace you see over here is used to start the definition of the class. In Java you'll probably see a lot of these. Right. So now the next line that we have is public static void main string args. Okay, this probably seems so weird, so strange, completely probably goes over your head. Um, now this line creates the main method that um, I've, again, the definitions in the description, go ahead, check that out. It basically just creates the main method. Now don't worry about what all the words in this mean for now. All you should know for now is that this begins the main method where we write the Java code we want to execute once the program starts. For most of this course, we will put all of our code in the main method, and that's how we're just going to be working with things. All right, so now you'll notice that there's another left curly brace that's used over here to start defining another method. There's a single Java statement in the main method, which is system.out.println, and it says, hello world. Right? So what happens here, and I will show you this in a minute, is that the words hello world are printed or displayed on the screen when you run this program. In this line, system is a class that is built into Java. Out is the object of uh, the class, referring to the output window. And the word print ln or print line displays a single text line. Now, notice that the text that is to be displayed, which over here is hello world, is in double quotes, and that after the print line, there are parentheses. Now, this syntax is important because otherwise you might receive a syntax error. You might also see that the line ends with a semicolon over here. These are used pretty frequently in Java. It's almost like a full stop. The right curly braces basically mark the end of a method, like we can see over here. All right. Now, the first one closes the first method, which is this one. As you can see, it's highlighted. And the second one closes the second method. All right. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is show you how to actually run this program. Hopefully, what you've done is you've copied down this code. And now we can go ahead and run this program, see how it kind of works out, right? So we're going to click on this play button over here, right? And once you click on this play button, we get this output right over here. Now, again, a very, very simple project. But as we've said over here, all it does is it just prints hello world. And that's exactly what this has done, right? The print command is probably one of the most basic, but most useful commands that we have in Java. And that's why I kind of want to introduce it to you in this video itself. Okay, so this was just an introduction to Java, and I really don't want to go too in-depth in just the first video, so I'm going to leave you here. But there are certain rules for Java, which I'm not going to talk about right now, but I've explained in the presentation that's linked to the description. So if you want to learn a little bit more, just click on the link. In the next video, we learn about variables and data types. If you found this course interesting, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching. Happy coding.